Welcome to The Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to The Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well-being. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks. To be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. As always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. I'm speaking with Juliana Silva today. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Giovanna. Happy to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, I uh, am, as you know, celebrating the 100th episode of The Well Woman Show. And um, yay. yay! And I wanted to have on people who have uh, been listening to the show for a while, have been a part of the Well Woman community. And in your case, you're both of those, but you're also, you work at West Enterprise Center. You're the managing director there. And West is actually one of our uh, members, our organizational members as well. So um, I wanted to hear it from that perspective as well to talk to you about your experience and that kind of thing. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, Juliana, let's just start with, um, tell me a little bit about West and and what you do at the West Enterprise Center. Okay. So West is a statewide nonprofit, and we were founded about 29 years ago by women for women to offer consulting and training and lending to anyone who wants to start or grow a thriving business. So our headquarters are in Albuquerque, and we're across the state with small regional offices. And in Albuquerque, we have an incubator, and I manage the incubation program. And we take high-growth companies in the incubator and help them learn the business of doing business while they're offering whatever it is that they do. And then outside of the incubator, we work with anyone in the community that wants to learn how to implement better business systems, do marketing, finances, accounting, things like that. And we help them build those systems and grow. So to be in the incubator, you have to kind of have uh, be further along in your business. Basically, you're, you're, you've proven your concept and you're out there right. with customers and you're, you're really at that next level. Yeah, and you you can still be in startup stage. Um, the the small difference between how we work with the hundreds thousands of clients outside of the incubator is you're projecting for sure high growth, and that can be in um, hiring employees or can also be in revenue. Um, but outside of the incubator, we work with solopreneurs or lifestyle businesses as well. Hmm, okay, interesting. All right, and so. Um... Why is West involved in the well woman community? How how did that come about? And why is it important to West to be a part of that? Well, like I said, we were founded um, by women for women. And at the time, we um, interfaced with women who were still having trouble, say, getting loans or finding resources that they felt were really supportive of them. 
And so that's why West was founded, to provide an environment that women felt very comfortable and supported um, with their um, growth as an entrepreneur. And I um, love Well Woman because I feel that it does that in so many ways besides just business. So we are so happy to be a part of the Well Woman community because I think overall it's a way to find and encourage all of our superpowers. And I love that that's something that you really focus on. And um, it's a community that I think is incredibly giving and brilliant. And um, I say this a lot, but I, that's because of you, Giovanna. Um, you have a vision for what the community is that you want to build. And, and I see it every time I interface with it, whether it's the show or in person. Hmm. Um, and can you, yeah, I, I love that because I hear that a lot from, from people that interacting with either the show or in, in person in one of our workshops or, you know, the retreat or something, um, that there is something very special and different about the interaction. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to understand that a little bit more because <laughs> it's so interesting to me because I just, you know, I just am there doing it. And I don't necessarily um, know from other people's perspectives how it feels or what it, why it's like that. So do you want to say anything else about that? Yeah, I think that um, as a leader and as a woman of influence, congratulations, um, I think you set a tone. And the tone is one of deep respect. And I think because of the work that you've done, deep understanding of women and our perspective in life and the issues we deal with um, as partners, moms, business owners, um, friends. And you're very um, good at setting that tone and vision for how we bring all of that to the table. Mm. It's positive um, and solutions-based. Yeah. That's awesome because that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So that's great. Um, I, I'm glad it feels like that out in, in the community and then, uh, you know, on the show. So um, can you tell me, when did you start listening to the show? Oh, gosh. I've been listening to the show for a few years and now I'm very into the podcast. So, um, I happened to take up running a few years ago and so the podcast fits really well into that practice. And, um, so it's been a few years. Yeah. And exactly. so what, how would you describe the show and what is its purpose for you in your life? So I love that you feature, uh, again, women who maybe are in encountering obstacles or dealing with internal obstacles. But um, I love that you feature ways and um, examples of how women have approached that in their life and where they have found support and help and solutions to those obstacles. And um I think you always have very interesting guests who have something to offer in lots of different aspects of life. Okay. And can you think of a, um, can you think of something in your own life where like listening to the show really helped you at, like get through something or tackle something or find a solution? Can you like think of an example like that? Um, a specific example isn't, exactly coming to mind. Um, one thing that really, one interview that I'm remembering though, and it's popping up for me is, um, an interview you did with Teresa Gomez and, um, that was on the podcast and it was about her, um, her health, um, struggle, but the awareness of her health struggle had, she had to peel it all back to how she was living her life. Yeah. And um, I always kind of keep that in my mind because I think as women, we tend to take on so much and I have to really be careful to do a lot of that self-care and, and put time and, and energy into that. And so it's, 
it's good reminders, but I always pick up something, whether it's paying attention to finances or um, paying attention to how we care for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Prioritizing that is so important. Mm -hmm. Um, And then what would you like to hear more of on the show? I love um, sharing these tips, tricks, and hacks for life. You know, I think we all have so much information coming toward us. Um, But one of the things that I really love that you feature is, you know, what are your superpowers? Because oftentimes we find that we have these skills that we don't necessarily think are that great, but they really can be a superpower and help us push through, you know, sticking points. And so I love hearing more of that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Okay, great. Well, uh, I wanted to um, see if we can actually do a quick um, run through of the Well Woman Life framework that you, um, I think we've done it before, like in a workshop or something, but I thought it would be fun to do it here for the listeners to hear how it works. And so um, for listeners, you can download the, um, the graphic of the, the Well Woman Life Framework. And, and the link will be like, if you're watching the video, it'll be under the video or it'll, it'll be on the show notes for this show. And um, if you don't have it in front of you, that's okay. But if you want to go and download it after, then you can. Um, and so um, Juliana, this will just take a few minutes. We'll we'll just kind of walk through um, one of your challenges. We'll just tackle like one thing right now. Okay. Um, and so, as you know, in Well Woman Life, we look at our lives in three domains, the personal, the professional, and the public. Mm-hmm. And so I want you to think about a challenge or your greatest challenge in one of those areas. And... Um, think about what that challenge is, um, something that you would really love to have some kind of change or transformation in, in that challenge. And it can be in your personal, um, or professional or public domain. And, um, on a scale of one to 10, I'm going to ask you two questions and you can share as much or as little about the actual challenge as you would Mm -hmm. like. Um, Okay. So do you have something in mind? I do. Okay. Do you want me to tell you? If you would like to. (laughs) (laughs) So um, one of the things that I have become aware of, you know, as you close a year and start a new year, I would like to be more fully present in whatever activity it is that I'm engaged in. And I'm thinking about this mostly professionally, but personally also. Um, You know, I I tend to love my phone a little too much. And so whenever I'm engaged in something right now, you and I are in an interview and I want to be fully present. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a meeting, I want to be fully present. If I'm meeting with a client, I want to be fully present. So this is something that I'm paying more attention to because it's really easy to get distracted by technology. Mm, Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Okay. So, um, so given that challenge, let's walk through these two questions and, um, sort of figure out where you are in the well woman life cycle with this particular challenge. And that when, once we find out where you are, we can figure out some of the tools and, um, and superpowers that we need to activate to, to tackle that challenge. Okay. So on a scale of one to 10, one being low, 10 being the highest, um, What's your current experience of your internal superpowers related to this challenge? And for the purpose of this particular exercise, um, let's think of our internal superpowers as self-love, self-care, self-acceptance, those kinds of things. And so on a scale of 1 to 10, what's your current experience of those internal superpowers related to this challenge? I'd say I'm at about a four. Okay. So um, the next question is on a scale of one to 10, what's your current experience of your external supports related to this challenge? Mm -hmm. 
And your external supports include things like um, family members, work structure, schedule, um, community, friends, you know, policies. Since we're talking about this particular challenge, you know, what kinds of external supports are there in that world? And, you know, the idea is to identify on a scale of one to 10 where your level of external support is lying right now. So interestingly enough, I believe assessing my external supports, I'm probably at a somewhere close to an eight. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenge for me is that I don't ask for enough help in terms of helping me activate my internal superpowers to get to, you know, an equilibrium. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So if you're kind of low on the internal superpowers and kind of high on the external supports, then you fall into the upper left hand quadrant. If you're following along on the framework, Um, this is the responsive stage, which is where there's a lot going on. There's a lot of external stimuli. Um, that's not necessarily bad. That's that's good. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Um, but you are uh, perhaps wanting to engage in everything and not being selective enough and setting, right. setting your boundaries. And so um, – On the other hand, your internal superpowers are low related to this particular challenge, meaning um, there's an imbalance there. So Mm -hmm. um, you've got a lot going on, very, you know, busy externally, and then this sort of slightly low point in the the self-love and self-care, which really just means you're not prioritizing your own needs in that area. Right. And uh, setting those boundaries. And so when we're in this stage, we can easily crash and burn, right? The sort of nickname for this stage is burnout. (laughs) Because because if you think about it, when you have a lot going on externally, that's that's very positive. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, this can relate to any any challenge, but we're talking about this particular one right now. And then your, your internal ability to take care of yourself and prioritize your needs is a little lower, you get that complete uh, burnout phase. Um, Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So um, does that kind of resonate with you with that particular? It does. It does. And I'm using this as, as one of my um, challenges and I, in the new year, I've, I'm working on implementing things that will bring that more to equilibrium. Like I started Whole30, which is totally a me thing, Um, and finding a lot of support for that. And then also, um, which has already come come up two or three times, I'm saying no to invitations, work-related invitations that come like at 5 p.m. for the next morning, (laughs) even though I could totally do it. But I'm trying to learn that internal practice of, well, that'd be a great networking opportunity, but... I didn't plan it, you know, so I'm going to have to say no. Yeah. And it feels weird, but I'm so much happier for it. And just, this is just a few days of practice, right? Yeah. Cause we're just barely into the new year. So I'm hoping that I can continue that pattern, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that is very in line with, uh, with the, the, the universal superpower that we talk about in the stage that you're in Mm -hmm. is awareness. Ah, okay. And so um, we have these unique superpowers, right? That are just very specific to ourselves that, that you have just reflected on very quickly here. Um, But then we have these universal superpowers and in the stage you're in awareness is super important because if you think, um, about being on a hamster wheel, kind of going round and round and round. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Um, you're sort of, you know, going round and round and you can't quite get off to catch your breath. Right. And like, think about what you're doing or, or reflect on what, 
what's happening in your life. And so that's this, that is when we, you know, go into major burnout. And it's really the important part is jumping off the hamster wheel so that we can actually get that awareness and reflect on why, you know, why am I doing this to to myself? And so it sounds like you're, you're already there and doing that with some of these things that you've already put in place. Um, And it's interesting, the things that you chose, like really tackling and getting a handle on like a kind of a a food or eating cleanse, which is the whole 30. Mm -hmm. Um, And putting a boundary around um, commitments. Right. And so some people might be listening thinking, well, what does that have to do with like um, being more present in a meeting and not looking at your phone all the time? Do you want to have, do you want to like respond to that? Yeah. um, Because I also think it's not just technology that distracts us. It's all the the committees in our head that are thinking about, okay, then that after this meeting, I've got to go do this. And then, and then, oh, wait, I didn't bring lunch. So, um, okay. So then, oh, oh my God, I'm starving. And, you know, so all that, that information is just swimming and it's taking us away, right. From being fully present. Mm-hmm. And so that self-care is really important because when you're fed and energized for the day and, restoring your energy through exercise or meditation or yoga or whatever it is, then you can be more present. And, um, and then of course saying no to things is really also, you know, it's almost like when we're doing something, we're getting ready for the next thing we have to do. And if we have so much to do that it's all stacked up, you're almost getting ready for things constantly and you're never able to just be completely present. For me, anyway, that's my experience. So that's kind of how I relate that. Yeah, I know that makes perfect sense. And slowing down and uh, having, you know, having a plan in place and basically just living consciously, right? Like really being aware and that that's the whole awareness piece of that. So, um, yeah, that's very interesting. So uh, I encourage people to look at the well woman life cycle and see it's, it's sort of fluid. So you may or may not spend a lot of time in each stage, but um, for example, you can move through the whole cycle in a matter of minutes if it's that kind of challenge, or you can be, you know, moving very slowly through the cycle over weeks or months. It just depends on what you're working on. So, um, Uh, Some of the other tools in the stage that you're in, Juliana, Mm -hmm. that I suggest to people are things like journaling, um, things like really um, prioritizing your needs, which sounds like you're already doing, um, cultivating empathy for yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's hard. (laughs) I'm very empathetic with others, but with myself, it's harder. I know. Um, and so do you do journaling? Well, um, not as a practice. It's odd that you say that at this moment, because I did pick up the whole 30 day by day journal. And so I've been doing that and it's reflective of a lot of things, not just food. It's reflective of energy and attitude. And so, so I have picked that up, um, now at the beginning of the year, I love to journal, but again, that's just, it's something that just gets deprioritized among all the things I want to do. But um, writing is one thing I want to pick up again. Yeah, that's a really good one for this stage to move. That's a great reminder. Yeah, because it just really helps you gain and and maintain that awareness that we so need. So good. Well, that was fun. Um, That was awesome. I love it. Yeah, cool. Um, And so then to finish out our little chat here, Juliana, I wanted to ask you about your superpowers for success. And this is how I end every show. (laughs) And I wanted to add this in here because you are such a powerhouse in what you do. I think other women would really love to hear what you have to say about these questions. So the first one is, what does success in life mean for you? 
You know, it's interesting as we quote unquote age, that shifts for me, right? And I think success for me means quality. I, I don't like that word, but deeply connected relationship. And so it's whether it's my relationship with my family, my friends, my clients, my colleagues. I want to just leave every um, encounter with people better than when I first encountered it. So that's that's really important to me. And that if I if I can do that a, a little bit of the time, I feel like I have success. Yeah. And um, Juliana, when did you know you were really good at what you do? Um. So what I say that I do is I, it's interesting. I just took this fun personality test that my son recommended. And one of the things that um, featured for me is that I love to tackle complex problems and bring them into simplest, simple, um, relatable solutions. And I think I've been doing that for a lot of my life. I've always loved puzzles. And I think I realized that I was really good at that and I thrive on that and love it. Um, a few years ago, probably right before coming to West, I joined West in 2011. But as I looked back on my life, I realized, oh, I've, I've always loved doing that. That must be just something that I'm naturally drawn to. Mm -hmm. So whether it's in problems that we face inter interrelationships or in business um, I just, I love being able to look at patterns and find, find good solutions that, that work. Cool. Yeah. And what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? Um, that it's probably the one I just said yeah, is complex information and, and, um, finding a solution and, and also being able to convey that solution in a way that, um, make sense to other people that are involved. Yeah. Cool. Um, what advice would you give your 20 or 25 year old self? So this is advice that I just reread and it's very tactical and it's about compounding. So I'm reading this book called the compound effect and it's all about compounding, not just in money, but in your life. So it's that, um, Compounding effect that happens that if you start saving $250 a month when you're about 24, you can save for about 17 years. And at age 67, you'll have a million dollars, even if you stop saving at age 40. And it just takes um, into effect the compounding effect. If you do the same thing starting at age 40, at 67, you'll have about $300,000. So you don't have the advantage of compounding when you start later. And that can apply to anything. So that's my my fun little tip trick right now that I would tell any 25-year-old <laughs> to yeah, consider. That's a good yep. one. Now, if you yeah. had told yourself that or if someone had told you that, would you have done it? No, because I'm sure someone did tell me. <laughs> but I think I would say it in a way that I think conveying – to our younger selves that life happens pretty quickly and um, paying attention where you are is really important, but also thinking about, you know, when you're 40, when you're 27, you think when I'm 40, I'm going to be ancient, but you're still so young. So, yeah, yeah. I love that. Okay. Can you describe a personal habit that contributes to your well-being? Um. I would say a personal habit that contributes is constantly learning. So learning new systems. I started running about three or four years ago um, because of my client, um, Pamela Otero. I'd never run in my entire life, but um, being open to learning and trying new things is probably something that helps me a lot. Mm. Okay. And, um, Juliana, do you identify as a feminist? I do. And if you had asked me that a few years ago, I probably would say, oh, I don't really think about it. But um, as we all know, the imperative is so keen right now 
to own our feminine power and to support each other in doing that. And so absolutely, I am a feminist. <laughs> okay. And, um, last question, and you may have already answered this, but maybe you have something else. Um, what are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? So I'm reading The Compound Effect. And I am also reading, I, I kind of read a bunch of things all at once. Um, there's a business book called Traction. And so I'm reading that as well. And it's a system for analyzing just six moving parts in your business so that instead of keeping track of 500 things that we think we have to keep track of, you look at it through this filter of six pieces um, that make up a business. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I need to read that. Um, I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we'll, we'll include the link to both of those books in the show notes so that everybody can have access to that. And um, wonderful. That was awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show Thank today, you. Juliana. I am so honored. Thank you. You're one of my heroes. <laughs> You're one of mine. So <laughs> the feeling is mutual. Thank you. Thanks. That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your Well Woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week. <laughs>